Living for 12 years now with Prudence, my wife. A perfectly normal married life, no friction. We have achieved the ultimate peace through marriage. Every morning we breakfast together in perfect harmony. Gerald! Yes? What are you doing? Nothing. Well, stop talking to yourself and come down. Well, almost perfect harmony. We have uh, separate interests during the day, and of course we have separate bedrooms during the night. A telegraph, madam. Thank you, Rose. Your time, sir. Thank you, Rose. As you can see, a quiet, uneventful start to a splendidly normal day. Students of social behavior will tell you that you can always tell a really successful marriage by the gay and witty conversation at breakfast. a world of business affairs, extremely comfortable but extremely dull. I used to invent little games to relieve the monotony. Morning started with the Thompson chase. Oh, sir, uh, sir, excuse me, sir. I'd pretend not to notice Thompson. Then I'd have a little bet with myself on how long it would take him to make me become aware of the day's agenda, which he was so anxious to hand to me. The record was 25 seconds. As chairman of one of the great clearing banks of London, I was absorbed exclusively with the acquisition of money. Money that flowed back and forth through the narrow, gloomy streets of the city. Also people. People and money. 
rich people than money. I'm always happy to dispense the charity demanded on me, but I wish I could cut out the embarrassment of having to inspect the brigade. I never know whether to tell them to have a haircut or shine their bosoms or just order them to present thermometers. And so it went on, every day, all day, hustling from place to place, from meeting to meeting, never a minute to myself. Sometimes I wondered how I stood it. You know, the were days when I couldn't even get home to dinner. I suppose the whole thing really started with my brother, Henry. Henry's a nice, comfortable, contented sort of person with a wife to match. Grace and Henry were very much in love and able to enjoy the, the simple pleasures of life. Every Friday, they would toddle off to the local movies. They seldom knew what they were going to see. It didn't really matter. What mattered was that they, they went together. On this particular and somewhat fateful Friday, they found out that they'd seen the film before. Would you be disappointed if we simply went home? I'm never disappointed to go home, darling. No, 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 please. <laughs> Allow me. ourselves with a bottle of champagne and take it to bed with us splendid thought go and get it i'll run a quick bath right Do you mind letting go of my arms? They're not trying to run away. Huh? Who are you? And my name is Tony Bates, and I'm engaged to your daughter. Engaged? To my, to my daughter? Well, I suppose she's your daughter, sir. I mean, if you're Mr. Hardcastle. Yeah, yeah she's my daughter. But she's neither engaged to you or, or anyone else. Yes. Geraldine! How dare you do such a thing? Oh, you're such a ridiculous mother! And don't speak to me like that! I'm very sorry, but I don't think it's got anything to do with you. Now, Mr. Bates, perhaps you'll explain yourself. Well, the fact is, sir, that I had to call for Geraldine, and while she was changing her clothes, we sort of got talking. You were talking to her while she was changing her clothes? Are you in the habit of talking to my daughter while she's dressing? Yes, sir. <laughs> um, at least, I mean, it isn't the first time, sir. Well, what happened then? Well, uh, pretty well everything, sir. My God. How old are you, Miss Bates? Twenty, sir. Do you realize you deserve a damn good thrashing? Yes, I suppose I do, yes, sir. It's unthinkable. I mean, it's, it's unthinkable. Geraldine, she's... 
She's only a child. Uh, in some ways, yes, sir. Where do you live? Besborough House, sir. Where's that? Princess Rishborough, sir. What's your telephone number? Uh, Princess Rishborough, 5246. Uh, I'd better speak to your father. At once. Tonight. Um, I'm afraid that isn't possible, sir. Why not? Is he out? He's in China, sir. When's he coming back? He isn't, sir. What, never? No, sir. Why not? Oh, well, he's a recluse. What do you mean? He's in a monastery or something? I have no idea, sir. He left home the day after I was born. Huh. Better speak to your mother, then. I'm afraid that isn't possible either, sir. She recluse, too? No, sir. She's dead. But who the devil does look after you? Well, my guardian, sir. Who's he? Well, it isn't a he, it's a she. Well, who's she? Well, my uh, aunt, Aunt Roberta. She doesn't appear to have much control over you, I must say. No, that's a fact. Very well, I'll talk to her. Oh, I'm afraid that isn't possible either, sir. Why not? Where's she? She's in Japan, sir. Oh, excuse me, sir. It's my friend John Marquis. She just took my car over to Missenden to get some petrol while we... Um, while we were waiting, sir. Mr Bates, you'd better go. Yes. May I have a quick word with Geraldine before I... You go? may not go home. May I just say one thing, sir? What is it? I love Geraldine. I love her very much. I intend to marry her. You will be hearing, Mr. Bates, from my lawyers. Tony, Geraldine, you're not still at it, are you? I really am most frightfully sorry, sir. Um, good night, sir. See, they were not disturbed. We have something to discuss. Yes, madam. Oh, hello, Mum. Geraldine. Yes? I... I wish to have a talk with you. Oh, far away, then. Oh, has Daddy gone already? He's gone to play golf. Geraldine, dear, I may have said one or two things last night that hurt you. Oh, I don't think so. You called me a prostitute once or twice, but I didn't mind. Well, well, naturally, I was very angry and shocked. Well, that's all right, Mummy. Forget it. After all, it wasn't your fault. Now, what are we doing about the Wilkinsons? Are we going? Geraldine, do you realise at all what you've done? Yes, I suppose I do. Well, you seem to take it very calmly. Well, the situation isn't a new one, you know. Not a new one? You mean that what happened last night has happened before? Yes, Mummy. With whom, may I ask? Oh, 
sure you didn't think I meant with other people. Where's Tony? Geraldine, how long has this been going on? Well, we started on the day of the boat race. Of course, that had nothing to do with it. Aren't you going to have some coffee or something? Thank you. A little later. I'm sorry you don't like Tony. He's a sweet person, really. We are not discussing him. I'm concerned about you and your behavior. Apparently, you don't realize it, but let me tell you, you've got yourself into a very serious situation. I think you're going to have to marry this boy. That's all I want to do. But do you know anything about him? Who are his people? Has he a job? What does he do? What's his future? I know I'm only your mother, but I, I would like to know something about him. And so would your father. Mm, that's quite easy, Mum. He was brought up by his own. Lady Bates. Lady Roberta Bates. Hmm. Not Bates's marmalade. Hmm. Yes, Mummy. Why didn't you tell me that last night? Well, it was difficult to tell you anything last night. You were so head up. But does the fact that he's Bates's marmalade make it any better? No, it does not. In any case, Geraldine, what you did was very foolish. The fact that he's rich tells us nothing about his private life. He's obviously very promiscuous. Tony's not promiscuous. As a matter of fact, he never made love to anyone before me. I wonder if you can be sure about that. What exactly do you mean by that remark? Well, I, I, I mean, Geraldine, that many women have been deceived about that. I think we'd better not discuss this anymore. You're talking about someone you don't even know, and you've no right to talk like that anyway, and I don't intend to listen to it. I happen to love him. Now, Geraldine, now, dear, there's, there's no need to get annoyed. I'm not annoyed. I'm bloody furious. I forbid you to use that language. I use it because it expresses what I feel. Well, don't use it anymore. At least not in this house, where you certainly never learnt it. The fact that you behave like a slut doesn't entitle you to talk to me like that. I'm your mother. And I'm concerned in this situation whether you like it or not. You seem to think that the, the whole thing has nothing to do with me. But when you find yourself about to have a child by a man who won't marry you, then I suppose you'll call on your father and me for help. He would marry me. I don't see the point in discussing it. Don't be ridiculous. Geraldine, he isn't even 21. His aunt may not even allow him to marry you. In any case, I'm not going to have a child. I shouldn't think you could be at all sure of that at the moment. You've obviously run the risk of it. I haven't. Of course you have. Mother, I'm not a child. I take my precautions. You, you take your precautions? Yes. What precautions? Thena. Thenol? The tablets? You take thenol tablets? Yes, the pill. But how can you do that? You can't get them without a doctor's prescription. I know. I've been taking yours. You've been taking mine? Where from? From the drawer in your dressing table. That's not true, Geraldine. It can't be true. I only have a certain amount, and I only take one a day. If some more had been disappearing, I should know at once. Of course you would. But you didn't, for the simple reason that I've been replacing them with aspirin. told me it was so, you could have knocked me down with a feather. I mean, really, it's absurd. Me, ordering perambulators. <laughs> you must admit it's damn silly. Oh, I don't know. Well, what do I want with another child at my age? I ought to be becoming a grandfather, not a father again. Well, there it is, old boy. I've just got to take it whether I like it or not. But it was a terrible shock. Terrible shock. Wonder whether it be a boy or a girl. Well, here's to it, whichever it is. To he or she. To the... Intruder. To your first son, Henry. To your son. <laughs> Thanks. What did you say that stuff was called, those tablets? Thenol. How do you spell that? T-H-E-N-O-L, I suppose. Why? I don't know. It just sounds vaguely familiar. Phenol. Phenol. What 
What'd you say, Gov? Nothing. Good God. This is what you want. Phenol, the very latest thing. Are you sure they'll be all right? All right, they're infallible. <laughs> Tell her to take one every evening without fail. Well, that might be a bit difficult. What's difficult about it? Well, I haven't actually, you know... I mean, it says she might not. Well, I, I, mean, I mean, I can't go and ask her to take the pills before I... <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> what you need is a bit of the old-fashioned deception, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. Vitamin B tablets keep you fit as a fiddle. Now, all you've got to do is take the vitamin B tablets out of this bottle, put the phenol tablets in this bottle, and there you are. It's in the bag. <laughs> it's not in the bag. And don't forget to read the instructions. You're a bleeding genius. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Half the girls in the village think they're taking vitamins. As a matter of fact. <laughs> Evening, sir. Excuse me, Rose. Madam in? Yes, sir. Where is she? In the library, sir, watching TV. Yes? If you want a drink before dinner, you better hurry up. Yes, thank you, I will. I wonder who it is. Did you say vitamins, Ted? That's right, mate. You're strong and pretty. You think I need them? Well, you've been looking a bit off colour just lately, Rose. That big house to run and only the cook and the old char to help you. Don't worry, nothing will happen to me. Not if you take these, it won't. But you must take them regular, the same time every evening. Funny sort of vitamins? The latest thing. One of these lasts exactly till the next one. Honestly, Rose, you take these and you'll be fine, and I'll be happy. You really do love me, don't you, Ted? I really do, Rosie. Why don't you take one now? lunch with Henry today. Oh, Gerald, do you mind? I'm trying to follow the plot. I'm sorry, I didn't realize there was one. I suppose you feel a Western is beneath you. Not at all. Then why do you keep interrupting? I was merely trying to give you some interesting news. Grace is expecting another child. Good heavens. Are you serious? Of course. Is there any reason why she shouldn't? I should have thought she was past that. Why are you always so uncharitable? She's no older than we are. Oh, I thought she was. What made you think that? Oh, I don't know. Her figure, I suppose. You must admit it's matronly. Don't matrons have children? I thought they did. Well, anyway, I'm sure I'm very pleased for them. And a little bit jealous? 
Yes. I should have liked to have children. One, two perhaps. But not by you. You'd have made a very bad father. Would I? Good night, Gerald. Why are you so anxious to find out who it is? She knows nothing about me. Why should you know anything about him? Unless, of course, you are going to divorce her at last. Well, why not? Don't imagine you're going to marry me. Once is enough. In any case, I'm not the marrying type. We'll find you some nice little cabbage to look after you. Thank you. That'll be lovely. Anyway, I don't think you'll do anything. I don't think you want to get into a fight. Well, I hate rows and accusations. Of course. Attacking her and disgracing her and treating her like a criminal. For doing what? What I'm doing myself. Exactly what you're doing yourself. What did you mean that? What you said just now about um, that you wouldn't marry me even if I were free? Well, of course I did. I told you I... Maybe I would marry you. But you're not free. And you probably never will be. You'd never engage a private detective. You won't tell your chauffeur to watch her. You obviously won't open her letters. You won't have the telephone tapped and you won't question her outright. Well, Sam, I must do something. Of course, you could do what Geraldine did. What Geraldine did? Why not? You say she wants a child by someone else. You'd say that dinner you'd look after her financially. And you want a happy solution for both of you? I'm only trying to help. What Geraldine did.
through a long and bitter winter, and with a plentiful supply of aspirin, I waited patiently for spring. It arrived at its romantic, blossom-filled best, to an explosion of flowers bursting brazenly out of fields and hedgerows, the countryside presented its brand new spring collection. Fecundity was everywhere around, and prudence Mrs. Hardcastle, uh, just hold on a moment. Mrs. Hardcastle on the line, sir. Put her on, please. Yes, dear. Do you know yet if you're coming back to dinner? I'm afraid I'm rather late. Very late? I don't know why. Please be back at a reasonable hour. I've something important to tell you. Is it something, um... I can't discuss it on the telephone, Gerald. I wouldn't have bothered you at all, but I know you're out tomorrow. I'll see what I can do. I'll call you back. Thank you. Give me a line, please. Hello? Liz, darling, I'm terribly sorry. I'll have to cancel tonight. Oh, merdi, ma What do you say? Uh, I just made a divine steak and kidney pie. Look, I rather think the great event is about to be announced. No! Yes, Prudence just called and she has something important to tell me. Go, go, quickly! The pie will be wonderful cold. Right, I'll call in the morning and I'll give you a full report. Okay. I'm back. Oh, good. Nothing wrong, I hope. Well, it is a bit serious, yes. You all right? Perfectly. Go along to your room. I've put the drinks in there. I'll be with you in a minute. I'll get something ready for you. Oh, yes. Uh, gin and tonic, please. Gin and tonic. Thank you. Well, what's the problem? This is going to be embarrassing, Gerald, but I'd better come straight to the point. Far away. No need for us to be embarrassed, surely. Well, the fact is, I'm afraid the population of our little household is going to be increased. What do you mean? I mean that Rose is going to have a baby. Rose? Yes, dear. Rose, you may well look surprised. By whom? By Ted. By Ted? Well, she told me about it this morning. She was very upset, of course, but I'll tell you all about that later. The first thing is to decide what is to be done. Have you spoken to Ted? Oh, certainly not. That's your job. Good God. Yes, I didn't expect this of Rose. I'm disappointed. So am I. You would better speak to Ted tonight. Oh, can't it wait till tomorrow? Well, in the morning you won't have time, and in the evening you're out. Yes, that's right. Miss, would you prefer to see him now, or wait until after dinner? Oh, ah, get it over. Um, uh, what am I supposed to say? He'll have to marry her. Does he want to? Well, that has nothing to do with it. He'll have to. Prudence, look, uh, give me five minutes to change, and then send him up. He's waiting now. Ted, come upstairs, please.
sir? Well, Ted, you can take it from me that in the entire history of this world, no man ever yet had any pleasure out of a woman without having to pay for it. You'll have to marry the girl. But I'm ready to do that, sir. Fact is, Rose will make a very good wife, sir. I told her that, sir. Fine institution, marriage. I assume, sir, that after the regrettable incident which has taken place, sir, that Rose and myself will not be required any longer in our present position, sir. No, no, wait a minute. Uh, no, not so fast. We'll, um, we'll talk about that later. Oh, it's very kind of you, sir. You know, Ted, I should have thought you would have been smarter than this. After all, there are certain precautions one can take, you know. Oh, we took them, sir. They just didn't seem to be any good. What were they? Um, something called a thenol tablet, sir. You mean that Rose has a supply of thenol tablets? No, sir, but I did, sir. Where have you been getting them from? The chemist, sir. Ferguson's? Yes, sir. On prescription? Uh, no, sir. The fact is, sir, Ferguson's dispenser is a very close friend of mine, sir. Oh, I see. I hope you won't let it go any further, sir. I don't want to get him into any kind of trouble, sir. No, 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 of course not. Oh, thank you, sir. So you've been giving these things to Rose, have you? Yes, sir. One a day, sir. That's the dose, sir. They really haven't done much good, have they? No, sir. Apparently none at all, sir. Yes, I won't be long. All right, Ted, you can go. Thank you very much, sir. I'd have a word with that friend of yours at the chemist if I was you. You know, he might have been giving you aspirin or something instead of the real thing. Well, that would be a very dirty trick, wouldn't it, sir? Yes. Please, don't, don't do that. I, I, I'll leave in the morning, as soon as I've done the breakfast. The box is packed. No, you do no such thing. You'll stay here and marry Ted. Will he? Will he? Well, he's already told you, hasn't he? Yes. I can't believe it. Ted could marry anyone. Yes, but it's you he wants, Rose. Surely he's, he's proved that, hasn't he? I'm so ashamed of the things I've done. The Lord will never forgive me. Well, he may later. In the meantime, I've suggested to Madam that we uh, make a little flat for you over the garage. Oh, sir. Oh, we don't deserve it at all. May the good Lord's grace be upon you. Yes, well, thank you, Rose. And uh, don't you cry any more. Rose, there's one thing I don't quite understand. Yes, sir? Why didn't those tablets prevent this? Tablets? What, what tablets? The, um, phenol tablets. How did you know, sir? Ted told me, told me everything. Ted? But Ted didn't know. Ted didn't know you were taking phenol tablets, but he was giving them to you, wasn't he? Give me vitamin tablets. Ted's a staunch believer in vitamins, sir. Well, in that case, where were you... Where were you getting the... <laughs> now, stop it. Stop it. Rose, tell me the truth. Have you been taking Madame Seenol tablets out of her drawer and putting your vitamin pills there in their place? Have you? Oh, my God. I'm sorry, sir. I spoke to my friend, sir, at the chemist, sir. They were the real thing, all right. Then why did you tell Rose they were vitamin pills? Oh, well, I had to, sir. If I told her what they really were, she'd never have taken them. Never? Oh, no, sir. You sure? Never, sir. Absolutely not. Why not? Well, she's a very religious type, Rose is, sir. Absolutely forbidden. Oh, I see. You didn't tell her the truth, did you, sir? No, Ted, I didn't. Oh, thank you very much, sir.
Disaster. Absolute disaster. What do you mean, disaster? It wasn't Prudence, it was Rose. Rose? Yes, Rose. Rose was taking the aspirins. Prudence's. What? Ted was giving her vitamins, she believed. Prudence believed Ted was giving her vitamins? No, he was giving them to Rose. And Rose was changing them for Prudence's vitamins. Her uh, aspirins, I mean. But if Rose wanted aspirins, why did Ted give her vitamins? She didn't want aspirin. Then why did he think she did? He didn't think she did. Nobody thought she did. I didn't say that. Gerald, what are you talking about? Well, how the hell can I explain if you keep on interrupting? Prudence thought that Ted... thought that Rose had a... aspirin... Large one, please. C'est ennuyeux, bien sûr, mais c'est pas très grave. English, dear, please. Mm, I'm sorry. It's annoying, certainly, but she knows nothing about it. I see no reason to be discouraged. I'm not discouraged. I will get a bottle of aspirin into my wife if it's the last thing I do. Good morning, sir. Aspirins? Precisely. Bottle. Large bottle. Certainly. you so elegantly call the pits. Oh, yes? Well, you can't go there. Why not? No badge. No what? No badge. You've got no badge. <laughs> Nobody gets into the pits without an official's badge. Well, how do I acquire an official's badge? I shouldn't think you do. But here, come on, get back. Come on, get back. Come back there. Hide it. Oh, my God. Get that idiot off the track! Get her out! Get her out! Good God. It's the old girl. All the same, I must speak with my nephew. It's very important. I've come all the way from Tokyo a week early. Just to see... Oh, there he is! Aunt Roberta! Darling boy! Oh. Pony! No one's allowed in the pits. You know that. This is Lady Bates, sir. My aunt. I'll keep her out of the way. Well, all right, but make sure you do. No. So this is a pit. Auntie, over here. Oh, that's it. You mustn't get in the way. One more lap and he'll come into the pit. Well, I look forward to that. Now, what about this girl? I had your letter. She's marvellous, Auntie, absolutely marvellous. And you say you are going to marry her? You bet. Do you intend to ask for my consent? What? I said, do you intend to ask for my consent? It won't be necessary once you've met her, Auntie. When will that be? You're dining with her tomorrow. Where am I? 30 seconds. Of course, it's not purely sexual, you know. There's more to it than that. I'm glad to hear this. What? I said I'm glad to hear. It's not purely sexual. We're going on holiday with our family, you too. Oh, I don't know about that. Where to? 15 seconds. Penzance. 
I'd rather go to a Malfi, dear, but I'm used to. Watch this, Auntie. <laughs> Down the bottom there. Come on, Jim, faster. Isn't that bloody marvellous, Auntie? All tyres change in 28 seconds. But why are the cars not fitted with proper tyres in the first place? Auntie, because... Like some tea? Yes, but who is that? Someone you know? My niece. Geraldine? Come on. Are you suddenly ashamed of me? Oh, Diane, it'd be absurd. The child doesn't even know of your existence. The child? Is she so innocent she can't even meet me? No, it isn't that. It's just that I don't... Well, what is it then? Are you afraid she'll ring you up your wife? Oh, of course I'm not. Now, come on. Well, what is it then? Oh, nothing. Let's find a table. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Gerald! No! Oh, I want to introduce Tony. Tony, this is my Uncle Gerald. He's the most beautiful uncle in the whole world, and I was called after him. How do you do? How do you do, sir? Well, I congratulate you. You have very good taste. Well, thank you very much, sir. Hello. Bonjour. Oh, Geraldine, excuse me. Let me introduce you. I am Mrs. X. How do you do? You won't have heard of me. But I have heard a lot of lovely things about you. Thank you very much, Mrs. The name is Mrs. Brett, Geraldine, dear. Mrs. Brett is my mistress. Oh, really? Oh, I'm so glad. I knew it would be somebody lovely. Oh, what a pity you can't bring her down to Cornwall with us. We're going to have a huge family holiday in a stuffy old hotel, all madly getting to know each other. We should probably end up fighting like leopards. Thank you, but I'm already going away with... with friends. Oh, Uncle Joe, we must go. We're in a party. Bye-bye. Uh, mm, Bye-bye, Mrs. Brett. Bye. Goodbye, Bye. 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 She is charming, isn't she? Yes, she's charming. What are you going to do, darling, while I'm away? What do you think I'm going to do? What do you think I'm going to do? What about your friends? Which friends? Well, those people with the poodles. They are going on holiday too, like everyone else. In any case, they're not friends. They are acquaintances. Would you like to go away somewhere? Well, of course I would. And if you dare to bring out your checkbook, I... Well, what do you want? I want... I want someone who is free. He doesn't have to marry me. I just want a man I can meet openly and go anywhere I like with. Anytime. I'm sick to death of being discreet. I want to go home.
Zebulon Jacob. Go away. Zebulon. I don't want to talk to you. Gerald. Oh, yes. How could any man have survived this long? Knowing nothing. But nothing. But absolutely nothing about women. My darling, I'm sending this to your club, as I expect it will be safer. The trouble seems to be that I have become a one-man woman. This is very difficult for me, because you are not able to become a one-woman man. It's not your fault, I know. I only speak of it because I can no longer bear the situation. If Prudence had become pregnant, things might have been different. But she has not. I'm going away. Don't try to find me. And please, don't be angry. It's the only way I know. Look after yourself. I love you. Elizabeth. Sir. What's that? It's for Madam, sir. Is she having dinner in her room? Yes, sir. She's not very well. Not well? No, sir. Nothing serious? She won't eat, sir. Hasn't eaten a thing all day. Nothing? Won't touch a thing. I'll tell you what you do, Rose. You give that to me. I'll try to persuade her. What do you say? Bum, bum. Bum, bum. Bum, bum. Come in, Rose. Oh, it's you. Prudence, dear, what's the matter? Oh, it's nothing, dear. I, nothing serious. I just don't feel up to scratch. What's that? Your tray. Oh, but I don't want anything. I told Rose. Oh, Rose thinks you ought to try. No, no, I couldn't possibly. Well, she said you haven't eaten anything all day. Well, I'm just not hungry. Oh. Have you got a pain? Well, yes, a little, just here. It's, it's, it's nothing. That could be appendicitis. If you took a little more interest, dear, you'd remember that I had my appendix out when I was ten. That's right, I forgot. I must get a new cold compress. Let me. No, Gerald, dear, just take that tray away. The mere sight of it is nauseating. Right away, dear. to take that away. You should try, Prudent. It's salmon. You know you love salmon. I couldn't touch a thing, really. It's poached. Ugh. But you get so weak. 
Oh, please, please don't talk about food. Well, maybe you'd like something else, an omelette or something. Well, if you don't feel better tomorrow, you'll have to see the doctor. I saw him yesterday. You did? Yes, Ted took me up in the afternoon. What did he say? It's nothing serious. He's just making some tests. Now, do go down and have your dinner, and I'll try to sleep a little. Sleep well, dear. And if you want me, I'll, I'll be downstairs. Is it the first time, Ted? Uh, no, sir. I took her up twice last week, sir. Twice last week? Uh, yes, sir. To the doctor's? Uh, yes, sir. Twice, you say? Yes, sir. Hmm. Mr. Hardcastle? Dr. Hewitt will see you now. Thank you. How do you do? How do you do? Do sit down. Thank you. Dr. Hewitt, you don't know me, but my wife is a patient of yours. As you know, for the past few days, she's not been too well. And last night... Your wife? Yes, Mrs. Hardcastle. Prudence Hardcastle. Oh, yes. Of course, I know you. I saw Mrs. Hardcastle about 14 months ago, Doctor. A year ago in May. And who did we send her file to? Dr. Morley, wasn't it? Yes, Doctor. Give him a ring and see if he's free now. He's just around the corner, 50A Wimpole Street. Oh, well, that's, that's very good of you. I do hope there's nothing seriously wrong. No, I don't think so. I just wanted to make sure, so I wanted to talk to you. I had no idea if my wife had... Um... Oh, please don't worry about that. I mean, patients do change. They're doctors from time to time. I'm only sorry that I can't help you. Thank you very much. Rose, you can send all those to the cleaners. And this, and this, and this. Yes, madam. Oh, and, uh, Rose, send my blue dressing gown, would you? It's on the back of the door in the bathroom. Yes, madam. My darling, I'm sending this to your club. As I expect, it will be safer. No, 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 nothing to worry about, nothing at all. Nothing that a good holiday won't put right. Sure. Absolutely. Greaves, Griffiths. Who? No, tell him to take an aspirin and lie down. I'll call him later. Greenaway, Greenhorn, Hardcastle. Yes, well, as I said, she's, uh, she's a little run down, a little anemic. I'm uh, giving her some iron injections. You examined her thoroughly, of course. Well, of course. And you found no symptoms of anything else at all? Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Well, what about these tests you're going to make? Tests? I'm not making any tests. Oh, then I must have misunderstood her. No, 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 no. Take her away. Give her a thumping good holiday. She'll be as right as rain. Well, we are supposed to go next week if she's well enough. Really, that's curious. Curious? Why? Nothing. I, I was just thinking, didn't the same thing happen last year? Last year? Yes, did your wife go away with you? No, that's true. Oh. Oh. Oh, yes, that's true. She, she was ill for one week before, and it was a fortnight before she could join me. Uh, yes, I see. I, I suppose that's it, then. <coughs> ah, yes, well, um, women are complicated creatures, Mr. Hardcastle. I sometimes think that the easiest way of dealing with them is to find out what they want and then <coughs> arrange for them to get it. Hmm? Yes, but I've been trying to do that since April, Dr. Morley. Good evening. Right. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And the next, please. Yes. 
Do you mind if I stop at the chemist, sir? Why? I have to collect something for madam, sir. What? Some medicine, I think, sir. What medicine? There's nothing wrong with her. Oh, I don't know what it is, sir. I left the prescription there this morning, sir. All right, we'll stop. Sir. Good evening, sir. You have a package for my wife, I believe. Yes, that's right, sir. I'll take it with me. I'm just on my way home. Right, sir. What sort of medicine is that, anyway? Phenol, damn it. Phenol? Let me look at that prescription. Dr. Hewitt. Yes, sir. Dr. Alan Hewitt. 427 Harley. Hewitt, by God! Oh, yes, of course I know who you mean. But I haven't treated her for some time, you know. She hasn't been here. She hasn't been here for a, for a year, at least. It must be a mistake. Dr. Hewitt. You wait, my good man. Just you wait. You and your mistress in her dinky little house. You wait, my good man. You shall have a prescription for some of Dr. Hardcastle's medicine now, and it's not going to taste very nice. Yes, I am. Did you have a good day? Yes, thank you. Did you? Yes, thank you. Let's go down then, shall we? Cheese, sir? It's the same cheese we had last night, no. Was there something wrong with the cheese last night? It was bad, that's all. Then why did you eat it? I didn't. Then how do you know it was bad? I smelt it. The coffee rose. I see the Tate Gallery has been swindled again. Swindled? Swindled out of what? Fools have paid £100,000 for Picasso. Oh, and you think that's a swindle, do you? Of course, I don't pretend I don't think about it, but even if it's a good painting, which I beg leave to doubt, couldn't be worth that. Well, you don't know anything about it. Why discuss it? I'm not discussing it. I just wish that somebody would tell me what the devil is supposed to be. Are you asking me? If you think you can explain it, yes. Yes, I could, but I doubt if you would understand. Why? Because the first time I've seen a horse with both eyes on the same side of its face? What makes you think it is a picture of a horse? The title. Femme au cheveux d'or. Cheveux means hair. Woman with gold hair. The French for horses is cheveux. Put the coffee there, Rose. Well, I still think it looks more like a horse than a woman. Possibly you understand horses better. I certainly don't understand Picasso. Oh, we can only hope he will survive that. I don't think anybody else understands him either, though a lot of people pretend they do. An opinion you share with most of suburbia. I'm sure Suburbia is honest enough not to praise a picture before seeing it. Well, I haven't seen it yet, admittedly. But I've discussed it with someone who has and who doesn't happen to be a Philistine. With whom? Your doctor? Oh, I never discuss painting with Dr. Morley. How about Dr. Hewitt? Hewitt hasn't been my doctor for some time. Might I ask why you left him? My sister recommended Dr. Morley. Hewitt no good, huh? Hewitt is a very good doctor indeed. Sounds like rather a strange reason for leaving him. Are you worried about my health? Not at all. I just find it odd that for the second year running, exactly one week before we go on holiday, you become so ill that all you can eat is milk, chocolate and bananas. I think I ate a perfectly reasonable dinner tonight. I expect to relapse tomorrow. Oh, why? So that you can pack me off to Cornwall with the family while you, on your doctor's advice, spend two weeks in the south of France before you feel well enough to join us. I suppose you have some basis for these insinuations. Yes, I have. I'm pretty sure that you left Dr. Hewitt as a patient 
in order not to run the risk of compromising him. You speak as though you had evidence of some kind. I have. I happen to know that uh, Hewitt has been giving you prescriptions for what is known as the pill. Gerald, give that to me. Oh, no. I will need that later. No doubt you can easily get another one. What do you intend to do with it? Is he married? No. Do you want to divorce me? What do you expect? Do you imagine you're going to cite Alan Hewitt? What else can I possibly do in this sad state of affairs? Oh, why do you have to be so sanctimonious about it? Are you so stuffed full of virtue yourself? You're not discussing me, my dear. No, not yet. Oh, we're damn well going to very soon. Well, maybe, but in the meantime, would this uh, fellow be um, willing to marry you? The question is not whether he would be willing to marry me, but whether he wants to. And the answer is that he does. But he's not going to. Not now. Not unless you and I find some other way of obtaining a divorce. Because you are not going to cite him. What makes you think that? Because he's a very good doctor, a Harley Street specialist, and it might damage his career. Damage his career? Oh, oh, oh we mustn't do that, though, must we? No, we mustn't. And I shall see that we don't. How? By pleading justification. That's how. Justification? You mean incompatibility of temperament? No, I don't mean that at all. I mean that I shall cite your little friend, Elizabeth. What do you mean? I mean that when you left your suit to be cleaned this morning, Rose found a letter in it. Where is it? <laughs> Never mind. You've got my prescription, I've got your letter. Nothing could be fairer. Well, look, let's just exchange. Oh, I think my solicitor would consider that to be distinctly disadvantageous. What are you going to do with it? Keep it. That way we shall both have the deterrent, shan't we? Prudence, come back. Prudence. If you don't mind, I must go up and pack my things. I'm going away. And don't try to find me either. Don't you like it? Well, why should I like it, Mr. Hardcastle? The weather's foul, the bedrooms are unheated, and the chef is merciless. Good evening, my lady. I hope you're looking forward to your dinner. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Till. Everyone is entitled to hope. Well, it's a jolly good little band, anyway. Ah, oh, there they are, drinking already. That's a good thing. Come and sit down, Lady Bates. Your nephew's found a wonderful wine for you. Darling boy, you're not entirely useless, are you, dear? <laughs> what a grateful day. And what a place of contrasts. Palm trees and Macintoshes. <laughs> this will console you, Lady Bates. Is this really true, Geraldine? Of course it is, Mummy. I don't believe it. Well, I'm afraid you'll have to in the end. But does Tony know? Indeed he does. You told him? Oh, of course I told him. Well, what did he say? He said it was dead zany. What do you mean, dead zany? <phone rings> yes? Oh, Henry, I can't talk to you now. Something frightful's happened. What? I didn't say delightful, I said frightful. Take everyone into dinner. Mother. As for you, Geraldine, go to your room. Go to my room? What on earth for? Until I've spoken to your father. Oh, you're not going to make a drama out of this, are you, Mummy? Do you suppose I'm going to talk to him in front of you? Well, I don't see why not. I tell him in front of you. In any case, I don't intend to have my baby treated as though it were a shameful secret. You intend me to make a public announcement of this at dinner? Very good news. 
You are happy about it? Well, of course I am. Aren't you? Happy? Happy? To see my daughter become a motherless father... A fatherless... Oh, I mean an unmarried mother! I am not a mother yet. And I can be married next week. Oh, it's the most degrading thing I've ever heard of. To think a daughter of mine can become so abandoned as to... Mother, in a minute, that telephone's going to ring. And Daddy's going to ask why on earth we don't go down to dinner. I therefore suggest that... Hello? Yes, hello, Daddy. Yes, we're coming now. Yes, I'm sorry we're late. Mummy's been having a little trouble with her crinoline. I'm very proud and happy to be Quiet. You. Do you want everyone to know? Yes, Mum. Oh, there you are. Where have you been? Your husband is here. What the devil you two been doing? Where have you been? Father? Yes? Mum has got some very important news to tell you. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, what is it, my dear? Go on, Mummy. Get it over. Um, look, shall I tell them? I want to propose a toast anyway. I ordered this wine specially. Yeah, but yes, well, uh, what is it? Krug, 1959. Yes, yes, yeah, I know that. I mean, what is the toast? I'm very proud and happy to announce. Come on. I'm very proud and happy and happy to announce that my daughter is, is ex expecting Expecting. Expecting. Geraldine. Yes, Daddy. Is this true? Yes, Auntie. Oh. Congratulations, my dear. Thank you. Are you ready for your second bottle now, sir? Um, yes, I think we are. Yes. The same, yes. It, it is, of course, the same, yes. Go away. <laughs> For God's sake, stop sniffling, Grace. May I suggest the baby spring lambs? No, you may not. Go away. Grace, come upstairs. I don't want to discuss this down here. I don't want to discuss it at all. Now, Henry, don't get pompous. <laughs> this has nothing to do with you, Gerald. Of course it is a family affair. Um, matter. Grace, come on. Deets, may I be allowed to say something? Yes, of course. Please, Henry. If I have understood right, we've just been faced with a fait accompli. Well, we must accept it gracefully and make fresh arrangements tomorrow. <laughs> Meanwhile, so that the dinner may proceed in a civilized manner, I shall propose a test. Thank you. To your daughter, Henry, to my nephew, may they bring up their children as well as we did. Bravo. After the holidays, I stayed in London. No point in going home. You know, it's a funny thing. For years, I'd fancied being a bachelor again. And now I was one. I hated it. Elizabeth had gone. She didn't even write. The world was full of lovely and attractive girls, but not my world. Yes, hello, what is it? Oh, you are back. I've been trying to get you all day. I've been back almost a week. Well, I hope you had a nice holiday. Look, um, I'm in a meeting. What is it? Gerald, I thought it would be a good idea if we were to meet and discuss things. Why? Well, I have something to suggest. What about? Well, about us, dear, of course. Uh, perhaps we could have a little dinner together one evening. As you can see, I'm rather busy in the evenings. 
Well, lunch, then. Can we discuss it on the telephone? I don't mean now. Well, I'd rather we had a little chat together, Gerald, dear, if you could manage it. All right, well, um, Friday? That would be perfect. Shall I come to the office? No, I'll meet you at the Ritz at one o'clock. All right, dear. I'll be there. Goodbye. Goodbye, dear. Don't like his tone, don't like it at all. I think I ought to go and see him. Oh, no, you'd only get into a fight. Mm. Better I than you. No, oh, it would be very humiliating for him, Alan, darling. There's no need to hurt him anymore. No need to hurt him. Suppose he doesn't agree. You've got to have that divorce, well, Prudence. I will, darling, I'm sure. Sure? Now, how can you be sure? How can you be sure of anything? Suppose he doesn't agree. Suppose he does nothing. Nothing at all, ever. For as long as we live. Now, what are we going to do then? In that case, darling, we bring up the most adorable little bastard that ever lived. Dry martini, please. Oh, thank you. You're looking well, Gerald. I'm glad. I'm just thinking the same about you. <laughs> what do you want to talk about? Oh, let's order lunch first. There's plenty of time. I don't know what makes you think that. You're 20 minutes late, and I have an appointment in the city at 2.15. Dry martini, madam. Oh, thank you. Well... It's about the question of divorce, Gerald. Look. I can easily give you evidence. Evidence about you and Hewitt? Well, there's no need for his name to be mentioned. Just an hotel bill, me, and a stranger. That's all that's necessary. He could be very discreet. One just plays gin rummy all night, I'm told. Are you ready to order, madam? Uh, yes, I'll have some cold salmon and salad. Anything before it, madam? Mm-hmm. Vichyssoise. And for you, sir? Grilled soul, nothing else. Sir. Well, all this card playing, whose reputation is that designed to um, protect? Mine or Hewitt's? Oh, both. You'll be the guilty party, then? Well, officially, yes. But that needn't make any of us feel morally superior to the others, need it? After all, Gerald, darling, life is very difficult for everyone, isn't it? We all want happiness. You too, I think. I should like you to find it, Gerald. I should like you to find someone who could give you everything you want love happiness children even you once said that i'd make a very bad father well you didn't take me seriously did you why shouldn't i oh gerald when a woman is having a row with a man she's entitled to say anything that comes into her head that's only fair mm. i better take another look at the book of the rules one just thank you sir. anyway about the divorce why in such a hurry all of a sudden Oh, I, I didn't say I was in a you hurry. You want to marry him? Well, of course. Well, but why don't you um, wait a while? Why don't you have a trial period like we had? Well, it didn't help us much, did it? No. Still, it's not as though you're going to have a baby or something, is it? No, it isn't. But supposing I were, what would you say then? I don't know what I'd say. I know damn well what I'd do. I'd get out my old service revolver, clean it, and blow his bloody brains out after what he did to me. Well... Wouldn't a divorce be more practical? Look, I don't want to talk about a divorce today. Let's talk about something else. I still think you should have told him the truth. Oh, how could I, darling? He'd have been wild with jealousy. He wants a child himself, you know. Oh. 
as far as I'm concerned, you've had your go and you've failed. Mm -hmm. Now, you've got to let me try. I bet he and I will settle the whole thing in ten minutes. Mm -hmm. I don't see how. Oh, men have a way of sorting these things out. <laughs> no, no. He might do something desperate. Nonsense. Alan, darling, please, will you promise me something? Don't go near him. He wasn't joking, you know. He had a very nasty look in his eye. Now, if he draws a gun, I'll shoot first. Look, it's her only hope. Damn it, he's got to be civilized about it. I want to get married, and I want to marry his wife. Yes, but darling... Darling, but... stop fussing. Get in the car. Ah! Ah! Miss Fraser, come in, please. Take a letter. Good morning, Doctor. Gerald Hardcastle. Hardcastle and Company. It's in Lombard Street. Dear Mr... No, uh, dear sir, dear sir, I have come to the conclusion that it would be a very good thing for you and me to have a brief meeting as I have something of great importance to discuss with you. Perhaps you will signify a convenient time and place. Take a letter, Miss Davis. Dr. Alan Hewitt, 425 Harley Street. Dear Dr. Hewitt, no, no, no. Dear Hewitt, I find your suggestion that we should meet somewhat surprising. I should have thought, under the circumstances, that such a meeting would be as distasteful to you as it is to me. However, as you are obviously not of this opinion, you may come to this office at five o'clock on Thursday next. Yours faithfully. In fact, the total book value of their securities at September the 30th was 28 millions, 516,000 pounds, not counting treasury bills, tax reserves, certificates, and interest accrued up to 17.28. Good God! Stop, then, stop, pull in here. I didn't, I just saw you, and I've got to talk to you. Not here, Gerald. You will hate it. No, it's a wonderful place, a glorious place. Now, come along, give me that. Let's find a table. Oh, thank God I found you. Are you all right? Of course, darling. Did you have a good early day? It was hell. Rain the entire time. When did you get back? Yesterday. Where have you been? To Paris, to my sister. I've just come back for one week to get my things. Now, I've got a terrific lot to tell you. A terrific lot. <laughs> I really don't know where to begin. First of all... Prudence found out about you. C'est pas possible. She did, but I found out about hers, too. No. Mm hmm Who was it? Her doctor, damn it. A man called Hewitt. Have you met him? Yes, once, and I'm going to meet him again in about an hour, and I'm going to give him a piece of my mind, I can tell you. Sending me all those damn great bills while he was... Well, anyway, the main thing is, he wants to marry her, and she wants to marry him, too. So, Liz, I can get my divorce now. Are you going to? Oh, why not? Why not? Oh, what do you think? I think you should. No, Liz, I mean about us. It's not so simple. There... there is a problem. You mean there's somebody else? Of course not. Don't be silly. Uh, excuse me. May I trouble you for the sugar? The what? Uh, the sugar. Oh. Thank you so much. Well, what is this problem? Gerald, I have something to tell you. What is it? I... I wait a baby. You wait a what? Yes, we... You and me are going to have a baby, a child. Yes. <laughs> what do you think you're... Miss Davis, when Dr. Hewitt comes... Mr. Harcastle. Dr. Hewitt, my dear fellow, you must forgive me, I couldn't get away. Come in. Come into my room. 
<laughs> well, now, how are you? I'm delighted to see you. Oh, yeah, yeah, very Let well. me have your hat. Do sit down. No, I think you'd be more comfortable there. Would you care for a cigarette? Uh, no, no. A cigar? No, no, really, no. You're quite sure? No, no, quite sure, but uh, thank you. Now then. What can I do for you? Well, I, um... I wanted to talk to you about Prudence. Darling Prudence, how is she? She's very well. It's a wonderful woman, Hewitt. A really wonderful woman. You know that? Yes, I, uh... I think so, too. Now, tell me all about it. Are you, are you happy? Yes. Frightfully. Good. Now, Hewitt, look. If it's all right with you, I'd like to push this divorce through rather quickly. What? You see, Hewitt, I'll let you into a secret. You see, I'm... I'm about to become a father, Hewitt. <laughs> what do you think about that? I... I don't know. Grace, look over here. That's fine. The final result of these disgraceful intrigues was a formidable avalanche of almost unbelievably handsome children. Grace produced the most divine little boy that ever existed. Geraldine had a little girl who was quite literally the most beautiful child in the world. Prudence, after the birth of a daughter. Oh, I beg your pardon, Hewitt, uh, birth of a son. Turned into one of the happiest and kindest people in the world with a child whose looks simply had never been equaled by any child ever before. And of course, there never had been any children quite so wonderful as the twins that Rose presented to Ted. Personally, I think babies are rather hideous little things. And to be quite honest, Elizabeth's baby was not really very different at first from the rest of them. But after a few years, she became without the slightest shadow of doubt, the most incredibly lovely child I ever saw in the whole of my fairly long life. No, but seriously, don't you think I'm right? Guardian, sir. Who's he? Well, it isn't a he, it's she. Who's she? Well, my uh, aunt, Aunt Roberta. She doesn't appear to have much control over you, I must say. No, that's a fact. Very well, I'll talk to her. Oh, I'm afraid that isn't possible either, sir. Why not? Where's she? She's in Japan, sir. Tony! Geraldine! Oh, excuse me, sir. It's my friend John Marquis. She just took my car over to Missenden to get some petrol while we... Um, while we were waiting, sir. Mr Bates, you'd better go. Yes. May I have a quick word with Geraldine before I... You go? may not go home! May I just say one thing, sir? What is it? I love Geraldine. I love her very much. I intend to marry her. You will be hearing, Mr. Bates, from my lawyers. Tony, Geraldine, you're not still at it, are you? I really am most frightfully sorry, sir. Um, good night, sir.
trouble for what you've got to do. Which man, take a minute, tell me something okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do, 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 do. once or twice, but I didn't mind. Well, well, naturally, I was very angry and shocked. Well, that's all right, Mummy. Forget it. After all, it wasn't your fault. Now, what are we doing about the Wilkinsons? Are we going? Geraldine, do you realize at all what you've done? Yes, I suppose I do. Well, you seem to take it very calmly. Well, the situation isn't a new one, you know. Not a new one? You mean that what happened last night has happened before? Yes, Mummy. With whom, may I ask? Oh, you didn't think I meant with other people. With Tony. Geraldine, how long has this been going on? Well, we started on the day of the boat race. Of course, that had nothing to do with it. Aren't you going to have some coffee or something? Thank you. L -l Later. I'm sorry you don't like Tony. He's a sweet person, really. We are not discussing him. I'm concerned about you and your behaviour. Apparently you don't realize it, but let me tell you, you've got yourself into a very serious situation. I think you're going to have to marry this boy. That's all I want to do. But do you know anything about him? Who are his people? Has he a job? What does he do? What's his future? I know I'm only your mother, but I, I would like to know something about him. And so would your father. Mm, that's quite easy, Mum. He was brought up by his own, Lady Bates. Lady Roberta Bates. Hmm. Not Bates's marmalade. Hmm. Yes, Mummy. Well, why didn't you tell me that last night? Well, it was difficult to tell you anything last night. You were so head up. But does the fact that he's Bates's marmalade make it any better? No, it does not. In any case, Geraldine, what you did was very foolish. He's rich, about his Where of the day's agenda, which he was so anxious to hand to me. The record was 25 seconds. As chairman of one of the great clearing banks of London, I was absorbed exclusively with the acquisition of money. Money that flowed back and forth through the narrow, gloomy streets of the city. Also people. People and money. Rich people and money. I'm always happy to dispense the charity demanded on me, but I wish I could cut out the embarrassment of having to inspect the brigade. I never know whether to tell them to have a haircut or shine their bosoms or just order them to present thermometers. And so it went on, every day, all day, hustling from place to place, from meeting to meeting, never a minute to myself. Sometimes I wondered how I stood it. Do you know, there were days when I couldn't even get home to dinner.
I suppose the whole thing really started with my brother, Henry. Henry's a nice, comfortable, contented sort of person with a wife to match. Grace and Henry were very much in love and able to enjoy the, the simple pleasures of life. Every Friday, they would toddle off to the local movies. They seldom knew what they were going to see. It didn't really matter. What mattered was that they, they went together. On this particular and somewhat fateful Friday, they found out that they'd seen the film before. Would you be disappointed if we simply went home? I'm never disappointed to go home, darling. ourselves with a bottle of champagne. And take it to bed with us. Splendid thought. Go and get it. I'll run a quick bath. Right. Do you mind letting go of my arms? They're not trying to run away. Huh? Who are you? And my name is Tony Bates, and I'm engaged to your daughter. Engaged? To my, to my daughter? Well, I suppose she's your daughter, sir. I mean, if you're Mr. Hardcastle. Yeah, yeah she's my daughter. But she's neither engaged to you or, or anyone else. Yes. Geraldine! How dare you do such a thing? Oh, don't be so ridiculous, Mother! And don't speak to me like that! I'm very sorry, but I don't think it's got anything to do with you. Now, Mr. Bates, perhaps you'll explain yourself. Well, the fact is, sir, that I had to call the Geraldine, and while she was changing her clothes, we sort of got talking. You were talking to her while she was changing her clothes? Are you in the habit of talking to my daughter while she's dressing? Yes, sir. <laughs> um, at least, I mean, it isn't the first time, sir. Well, what happened then? Well, uh, pretty well everything, sir. My God. How old are you, Miss Bates? Twenty, sir. Do you realize you deserve a damn good thrashing? Yes, I suppose I do, yes, sir. It's unthinkable. I mean, it's, it's unthinkable. Geraldine, she's... She's only a child. Uh, in some ways, yes, sir. Where do you live? Besborough House, sir. Where's that? Princess Rishborough, sir. What's your telephone number? Uh, Princess Rishborough, 5246. Well, I'd better speak to your father. At once. Tonight. Um, I'm afraid that isn't possible, sir. Why not? Is he out? He's in China, sir. When's he coming back? He isn't, sir. What, never? No, sir. Why not? Well, he's a recluse. What do you mean? He's in a monastery or something? I've no idea, sir. He left home the day after I was born. Huh. Better speak to your mother, then. I'm afraid that isn't possible either, sir. Is she a recluse, too? No, sir, she's dead. Private life. He's obviously very promiscuous. Tony's not promiscuous. As a matter of fact, he never made love to anyone before me. I wonder if you can be sure about that. What exactly do you mean by that remark? 
Well, I, I mean, Geraldine, that many women have been deceived about that. I think we'd better not discuss this anymore. You're talking about someone you don't even know, and you've no right to talk like that anyway, and I don't intend to listen to it. I happen to love him. Now, Geraldine, now, dear, there's, there's no need to get annoyed. I'm not annoyed. I'm bloody furious. I forbid you to use that language. I use it because it expresses what I feel. Well, don't use it anymore. At least not in this house, where you certainly never learnt it. The fact that you behave like a slut doesn't entitle you to talk to me like that. I'm your mother. And I'm concerned in this situation whether you like it or not. You seem to think that the, the whole thing has nothing to do with me. But when you find yourself about to have a child by a man who won't marry you, then I suppose you'll call on your father and me for help. He would marry me. I don't see the point in discussing it. Don't be ridiculous. Geraldine! He isn't even 21. His aunt may not even allow him to marry you. In any case, I'm not going to have a child. I shouldn't think you could be at all sure of that at the moment. You've obviously run the risk of it. I haven't. Of course you have. Mother, I'm not a child. I take my precautions. You... You take your precautions? Yes. What precautions? Phenol. Phenol? The tablets? You take phenol tablets? Yes, the pill. But how can you do that? You can't get them without a doctor's prescription. I know. I've been taking yours. You've been taking mine? Where from? From the drawer in your dressing table. That's not true, Geraldine. It can't be true. I only have a certain amount, and I only take one a day. If some more had been disappearing, I should know at once. Of course you would. But you didn't, for the simple reason that I've been replacing them with aspirin. told me it was so, you could have knocked me down with a feather. I mean, really, it's absurd. Me, ordering perambulators. <laughs> you must admit it's damn silly. Oh, I don't know. Well, what do I want with another child at my age? I ought to be becoming a grandfather, not a father again. Well, there it is, old boy. I've just got to take it whether I like it or not. But it was a terrible shock. Terrible shock. Wonder whether it be a boy or a girl. Well, here's to it, whichever it is. To he or she. To the... Intruder. To your first son, Henry. To your son. <laughs> Thanks. What did you say that stuff was called, those tablets? Theno. How do you spell that? T-H-E-N-O-L, I suppose. Why? I don't know. It just sounds vaguely familiar. Theno. Theno. What did you say, Gov? Nothing. God. This is what you want. Phenol, the very latest thing. Are you sure they'll be all right? All right, they're infallible. <laughs> Tell her to take one every evening without fail. Well, that might be a bit difficult. What's difficult about it? Well, I haven't actually, you know... I mean, to say she might not. Well, I, I, mean, I mean, I can't go and ask her to take the pills before I... <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> what you need is a bit of the old-fashioned deception, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. Vitamin B tablets keep you fit as a fiddle. Now, all you've got to do is take the vitamin B tablets out of this bottle, put the phenol tablets in this bottle, and there you are. It's in the bag. <laughs> it's not in the bag. And don't forget to read the instructions. You're a bleeding genius. <laughs> it's nothing. <laughs> Half the girls in the village think they're taking vitamins. As a matter of fact... <laughs> Evening, sir. Excuse me, Rose. Madam in? Yes, sir. Where is she? In the library, sir, watching TV.
been living for 12 years now with Prudence, my wife. A perfectly normal married life. No friction. We have achieved the ultimate. Peace through marriage. Every morning we breakfast together in perfect harmony. Gerald! Yes? What are you doing? Nothing. Well, stop talking to yourself and come down. Well, almost perfect harmony. We have uh, separate interests during the day and, of course, we have separate bedrooms during the night. The telegraph, madam. Thank you, Rose. Your time, sir. Thank you, Rose. As you can see, a quiet, uneventful start to a splendidly normal day. Students of social behavior will tell you that you can always tell a really successful marriage by the gay and witty conversation at breakfast.
Goodbye, Prudence, dear. Goodbye, Gerald, dear. My world was a world of business affairs, extremely comfortable but extremely dull. I used to invent little games to relieve the monotony. Morning started with the Thompson chase. Oh, sir, uh, sir, excuse me, sir. I'd pretend not to notice Thompson. Then I'd have a little bet with myself on how long it would take him to make me become a... Yes? If you want a drink before dinner, you better hurry up. Yes, thank you, I will. I wonder who it is. Did you say vitamins, Ted? That's right, mate. You're strong and pretty. You think I need them? Well, you've been looking a bit off colour just lately, Rose. That big house to run and only the cook and the old char to help you. Don't worry, nothing will happen to me. Not if you take these, it won't. But you must take them regular, the same time every evening. Funny sort of vitamins? The latest thing. One of these lasts exactly till the next one. Honestly, Rose, you take these and you'll be fine, and I'll be happy. You really do love me, don't you, Ted? I really do, Rosie. Why don't you take one now? Uh, lunch with Henry today. Oh, Gerald, do you mind? I'm trying to follow the plot. I'm sorry, I didn't realize there was one. I suppose you feel a Western is beneath you. Not at all. Then why do you keep interrupting? I was merely trying to give you some interesting news. Grace is expecting another child. Good heavens! Are you serious? Of course. Is there any reason why she shouldn't? I should have thought she was past that. Why are you always so uncharitable? She's no older than we are. Oh, I thought she was. What made you think that? Oh, I don't know. Her figure, I suppose. You must admit it's matronly. Don't matrons have children? I thought they did. Well, anyway, I'm sure I'm very pleased for them. And a little bit jealous? Yes. I should have liked to have children. One, two, perhaps. But not by you. You'd have made a very bad father. Would I? Good night, Gerald. Why are you so anxious to find out who it is? She knows nothing about me. Why should you know anything about him? Unless, of course, you are going to divorce her at last. Well, why not? Don't imagine you're going to marry me. Once is enough. In any case, I'm not the marrying type. We'll find you some nice little cabbage to look after you. Thank you. That'll be lovely. Anyway, I don't think you'll do anything. I don't think you want to get into a fight. Well, I hate rows and accusations. Of course. Attacking her, disgracing her, and treating her like a criminal. For doing what? What I'm doing myself. Exactly what you're doing yourself. Did you mean that, what you said just now about um, that you wouldn't marry me even if I were free? Well, of course I did. I told you, I... Well, maybe I would marry you. But you're not free. And you probably never will be. 
You'd never engage your private detective. You won't tell your chauffeur to watch her. You obviously won't open her letters. You won't have the telephone tapped and you won't question her outright. All the same, I must do something. Of course, you could do what Geraldine did. What Geraldine did? Why not? You say she wants a child by someone else. You'd say that in her, you'd look after her financially. And you want a happy solution for both of you? I'm only trying to help. What Geraldine did. Thank you.